Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This video is going to build off of video number 153 where we talked about the L298N board just standalone by itself. We hooked up some voltage to it and just kind of went over how that part works. In this video we're going to hook up a motor and an Arduino and use pulse width modulation to manipulate the motor, turn it on, turn it off, and control the speed. I am going to control the direction also, but I don't know that you can really see it very well in the video. This is going to be the diagram we're going to use for this example. I've got the green wire going to the pulse width modulated input, I've got the yellow wire going to N1, and the orange wire going to N2. Then I have a motor hooked up. I'm not using yellow and green for that because the motor already came with soldered on connectors that are red and black. I'm also not using a 9 volt battery. I'm going to use a 5 volt power supply. You have to be careful. The power supply that you use has to be equal to what your motor can run at. And in my case, my motor is set to run between 3 and 6 volts. So I figure 5 volts is fine. But I am using a separate 5 volt power supply for the motor side. I found I was just getting a little more consistent results when I had that rather than running the power out of the Arduino through the USB connector to the PC. And you can see the way I have it connected there is pretty close to the way it is. Now this isn't really all that clear but I wanted to put this photo in there. You can see that I have the green wire coming in and that's the pulse width modulated. When you purchase this board on the far left and right, depending on how you're holding it, for the in and out pins or for the in pins, you can put a jumper across the ends. And if you put the jumper on, it feeds 5 volts from this back pin to this front pin here. But what we're going to do by disconnecting it, there's nothing going into that pin. And this front pin is what controls the when the motor is actually turned on or off. And so by using the pulse width, now we can adjust when the motor's on. And then we use the yellow and the orange to control the direction. And then for this one, I'm using a Luxblox connectors just to kind of hold that motor together. And if you have any, it just takes four of these blocks. You pop them together, you run a bolt through it or a screw through it. And then you connect it to the standard connector that comes with the motor. And then you just pop the motor in. And I just put a wheel on it for now. If you buy these standard motors, they come with a whole bunch of little ends if you buy the kit and I think it's like eight bucks or ten bucks for this whole kit. It's truly really come in handy for a lot of different experiments. The code that's in the Arduino, I'm going to start with my standard basic code. I've made a little bit of change to my async delay as far as the rollover portion and this will be the first video where I'm incorporating it into a standard video. But I'm not sure where this series is going to go and I do plan on incorporating an action display to control the forward and backward motion of the motors. So I thought, well, I'll just start with the basic one, add on to it, comment out what we're not going to need, and then when we do get to it, I can just uncomment it, and it should be easier to follow. So at this point, it's just my basic start, and we'll just add all the code as we go. What I have here is just the configuration for the motor. I'm labeling some pins rather than using the pin numbers. We're going to use pin 5, 6, and 7 to control the motor we're going to use today. I have got the pins in there for the motor B or for the other side. If you're using these for a stepper motor, you control one stepper motor. But if you're using to control a DC motor, you can control two with the same board. Now, I just put a little note on there to ignore them for this video. But we'll use pin 5 for a pulse width modulated output. And we'll use N1 and N2 on the little red L298N board, even though they're labeled N, their outputs on the Arduino, and they'll be on 6 and 7. We're not going to use the software serial yet, but I'm just going to leave it in there for now. It doesn't take up much memory, and it'll be less I have to comment out. Now in the setup, not only do we have to start the serial ports, but we also have to get those pins that we've associated to the controller board configured, and we're going to set them all up as outputs. So we got our pulse width modulated A, and B down here, and then we have N1, 2, 3, and 4, and they'll all be configured as outputs. And then in order to have the motor off, the outputs need to be low. And N1 and N2 will control one motor, and N3 and N4 control the other motor. And so you just set them both to low. And depending on which one you turn on, will set the direction of the motor. 
So in one, when we turn it high, it'll go one direction. And in two, when we turn it high, it'll go the other direction. And then just to get started, we're going to analog write the pulse width modulated A to 255. In other words, we're just going to turn it on so it's, it'll appear to be on all the time. And so that way, when we do our initial test, which is just going to be to run the motor for a second, it'll just it'll run and we don't have to worry about setting that value. Now in the loop itself, I have all this stuff for the connection display. So I'm just going to comment that out. And now with that done, we'll add the code to the top of it. Now in order to get the motor going, you have to pick N1 or N2 and turn one of them high. And once we do that, the motor will start turning because we have already have the pulse width modulated output set to its highest value. And we're going to ignore N3 and N4, but that would, that would set the other motor on. And then we're going to serial print out motor on. And we're going to let it run for two seconds. And then we're going to set the inputs to low. We're going to output motor off and we're going to let it sit for five seconds. And then we're going to do the same thing in the opposite order. We're going to turn N2 on and N1 low, or leave it low, and we'll let it sit for two seconds. And then we're going to turn it off by turning them both low, and then we'll wait two more seconds. I don't know why I have this one set at five seconds. I'm going to change that so it goes a little quicker. Okay, now we'll upload this and I'll switch it over to the camera. And I'll also have the uh, serial monitor going so you can see the, the motor on, the motor reverse, and that coming through. Like I said, I don't think you'll be able to tell the, the direction of the motor. So you can see the motor's coming on. And it's going in reverse. So it's working like we would think it's going to work. But now we'll adjust some of the speed on it. And we do that by replacing this delay 2000. So what we're doing is we're going to turn the motor on right here. And then instead of delaying, we're going to get down here. And since the first time through it will be set at that 255, so it will kick on right away. But after that it will be set to whatever we leave the value with when we leave this um, this little area of code. So instead of delaying, what we'll do is we're going to count, and we're going to count by 10. So we're going to start at 10, and we're going to go up to 250. And we're going to do it in steps of 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then we'll print out what the speed is, or what the pulse width modulated setting is, not so much the speed. And then we're going to delay half a second between each step. And we're going to do the same thing on the reverse step. And it can be the exact same code because the direction is determined up here in the N2 or the N1. So the code's identical for controlling the speed. We'll upload this and I'll get it all set back up so we can see it. And you can see that the motor isn't spinning right now, but it does start to spin once it gets to the right pulse. But there's just not enough being sent to it to keep it spinning. Now the next time through, we'll see where it starts spinning. Looks like it's around 110, 120 going one direction. And it's about the same, about 100 or so going the other direction. And now that we know what that speed is, we can do some further adjustments to, to zero in a little bit more on when this motor turns on and when it turns off. So instead of going from 0 to 250, we'll go from 80 to 150, and we're going to step in steps of 5 instead. So that'll give us a little bit more granular look at it. And we're going to do the same thing on the reverse. What you'll notice is it doesn't act the same going both directions. Theoretically it does, but this is where a real world test comes in and shows you how things don't always work the way you think that they'll work.
Oh, it helps if I turn it on. So it was what, about 95, 100? About what we thought. And this is closer to 100 or 105. So they're, they're pretty close, but they are just a little bit off. But now what I would but now I want to show you what happens when you do it in reverse. So instead of going from 80 to 150, we're going to go from 150 down to 80. So now based upon that, you would expect it to start fast and then about 100 drop out. So it's starting just like we thought. But then you'll notice it just keeps going. And that's because once a motor has started, it's easier to keep it running than it is to get it started. But now I kind of want to know how far down it will go. So instead of just going to 80, we're going to go all the way down to 10. So I just don't think it'll run all the way down to 10. I'm to me it sounds and feels like I'm holding the clamp. It feels like it's stopping around 50. Fifty or sixty, somewhere in that range. So it sounds like we could set our range from fifty or sixty up to two hundred and fifty. We could get a nice speed variation based upon our pulse width modulation. We're going to do another test here. What I've done is I've set it back to where it was, fifty to one fifty, or increment by five. We're going to update the reverse also. And just to make sure that it's functioning the way we think it will, it shouldn't run until it hits about 100, 110. Actually, it was about 120 that time. And there, about 100 on the reverse there. I'm going to let it go back through the forward again and see if it's about the same. Yeah, about 120. That's pretty interesting. And about 100 there. So we know that if if we're going from quick or from a higher speed to a slower speed, it'll keep running at those lower levels. So really what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to give it just a little bit of a boost. And we're going to do that with the final test here. And so instead of just going 4 and starting at 50 and going to 150, we're going to set our pulse width modulated at 150. And we're going to run it for just 100 milliseconds, a very short amount of time, and then we're going to drop it down to 50 and do our count up. And in hoping of, of giving it a little kickstart, it won't actually hit that 150 because it'll take a minute to rev up to it. So it'll appear to start at 50 and go up to 150. And you can see now it started spinning right away at 50. And it works in the reverse also. So giving it that little bit of a, a jolt helps get it going. You can play with that 100 milliseconds because it maybe only take 50 to get it going. I'm not 100% sure, but that's something you could easily do on your own.
So just for a quick review, we're using one of these little L298N boards. You can control two separate DC motors with it. You just configure the pins, which is pretty simple because we just have to can turn one on and one off to control the direction. And then you have an analog out or a pulse width modulated port out to control the speed. We defined our pins down here as all output and we initially set them to low so it doesn't just kick on the motor right away. And then when you want to pick your direction, you just set one of the pins high, the other one low, and then you set your pulse width modulated output at some level, and then you can make the motor spin. If you want it to spin at a really low, um, a low RPM to begin with, you got to give it a little bit of a boost to get it started, and then you can set it at that lower RPM. For this video, I just had this tiny toy motor running with no real load on it. What I plan on doing is taking this little um, windmill that I made out of those blocks just to give the motor a little bit more stress. I'm going to attach a Hall Effect device on it and collect the RPMs. And then we can add more of these little blocks on the edge to add more of a load. And then I want to set it up and then in a follow-up video I want to set up to where we can control that RPM and if we add more of a load we can leave it set right where it is and have the Arduino detect that more of a load and hold the RPM where we want it to be. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.